it is, you know, it was great to, great to get the phone call to say I was included in the squad. You know, it's a great opportunity for myself, you know, to impress all the staff, especially at my age, it's great to be in so young. Um, yeah, I'm enjoying it so far and looking forward to the week ahead, try and learn as much as possible. Learn from two great goalkeepers as well, so it's only great for me. How was yesterday? Yeah, it was really good. It was good to get the get into the first session, you know. Um, really enjoyed it, you know. Tough first session, but um, thought it went okay, you know. So um, yeah, looking forward to the rest of the week as well. How much football have you played this season? Yeah, it's been a difficult one for me. Obviously, yeah, uh, being third choice at Bournemouth as well, trying to get play as many 21s games as possible, you know. But hopefully next season, you know, can go out on loan maybe and try and get as much games as possible. It's hard for a goalkeeper, isn't it? Outfield players always get a chance off the bench or whatever, but you goalkeepers, you just have to bide your time. Yeah, definitely. You know, patience is a big thing. Um, you know, being third choice, you have to, you know, opportunities don't really come that often, you know. So, um, yeah, you just got to learn from the keepers ahead of you and hopefully, uh, hopefully my time comes. Ender, you must remember what it's like to be called up first time. Do you feel almost like one of the, one of the old boys now, one of the experienced guys? Uh, age wise, I feel old, yeah. <laughs> Um, but no, not really. Um, <coughs> there's a lot, of, a lot of lads in the team that have been there, been around the team for for years and years. So I'm still kind of trying to earn my way in and become a more regular player. Yeah. How pleased have you been with your season? David McGoldrick in here yesterday saying that you just got better and better as the months have gone on. Yeah, we've we've just kind of sustained the level of performance where we're, we're starting to win games where we're not necessarily playing well and and we're keeping a lot of clean sheets. So. We've just got to keep that form up and, and maintain it, and uh, especially for the run-in. Like it's only eight games left now to go, so it's it's eight massive games for us. I know you probably won't tell us, but have you got any sense already whether Nick is looking at a back four <coughs> or, or wing backs? I've I've no idea. So, I know we've spoken about it before. Can you sort of distill the difference between being a, a, a left back and a back four and a wing back, and how different is it mentally? Uh, it's not much different. It's uh, like I've played left back most of my career. Um, I'm still only playing wing back. I think my third season now, but uh, I played enough games in both positions now to know the differences of what what it takes. Like with wing back, you're more you're just a little bit higher up the pitch than you are usually as a full back, and the demand isn't as much on you defensively uh, as a left back is. There's quite a few Sheffield United players in the squad, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, we're racking up a few and it's good because we've got a good relationship at Sheffield United and hopefully we can take that into Ireland. Thank you. Andrew, you're in great form this season. Why exactly did you put that down to? Um, just finding my feet and enjoying my football and, and playing in a good team. Um, we're, not, we're not a team with like the biggest names, but uh, when we go out there and play, everyone knows their jobs. We, uh, we have a good good relationships, as I said, uh, on the pitch and off the pitch, and we just want to do well for each other. Mm. I mean, this looks like a starting eleven in this squad, and obviously people would have heard set up now that Cheeto can perfectly fit the same as a backup. Uh, there's an opportunity there, like, like there is for everybody, because it's, it's a fresh slate with, um, with the new manager and staff coming in, so it's just a case of trying to impress and train, and, and hopefully if you, if you get the opportunity, it, it comes down to, to me to take it. Yeah, it's got to be. Um, we, we're we confident as players, and I'm sure the manager and the staff are confident. Um, and the group the group looks, it's, it is competitive, but um, it's one that we, we feel we can do well in. Andy, can I ask you how difficult is it to get into the team and to Um, it's, I think football is a case of not getting too high and not getting too low. Um, <coughs> just, just swings and roundabouts. Like there's only massive turns, I think, with, with eight games left. There's still a, bit, there's still a lot of football to be played. So um, we've just got to, it's a whole play, cliche, one game as it comes. And uh, we've got a little break away from the league now. So it's just the opportunity and something to look forward to now playing with Ireland. Can you allow yourself to dream about? Yeah, you can dream, but you, as I said, you just keep your feet in the ground, and you just it, it's an exciting it's an exciting time for us. So um, it's just not here yet. So you gotta just relax and focus on something else. Thanks, Thanks. 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 Thanks.
Yeah, yeah. yeah, like I was impressed with him when, when this very first day he came in training with us. I couldn't believe, I couldn't believe he was actually on trials. Um, I thought we'd already signed him. I was thinking that's some coop. Um, but he's been excellent. He's he plays the, the, the striker role differently to most players. It's a different way of, of, of and it benefits a lot of people around the pitch. It makes it makes most of the team probably a better player because he takes the ball in tight situations. He's He's tricky, he gets goals, he's got a bit of everything. Well, the, the, the criticism of the last campaign was that as a team you, you didn't score enough goals, didn't get enough chances. Can David Gray make a role in helping you turn that around? Yeah, I think so. I think I think all the strikers can. It's the hardest part of the game is to score goals. Um, um and they they they're the ones that they're, they're the ones under the most spotlight, especially if they're not scoring and so I think now um, Gibraltar away it'd be a tough game, but I think hopefully we can score a few goals. And then you had a great success this year with Norwich, and I'm just wondering how much did you know you're coming into the final and throwing in those hits? How much does that experience help? Yeah, it does help because uh, I've experienced it at Portsmouth uh, for two years, and then I experienced it to a port. Uh, sorry, Portsmouth with one in year, and then Shamrock Rovers for two years. So. Um, I kind of understand how big game, like the, the Leeds game was seen as a massive game, a be all end all game, which it wasn't, but uh, that's just how it gets bigged up. But we we know that there's a lot of tough teams left to play in the league, and we just got to keep our feet on the ground and just stay stay focused on it. Um, yesterday, uh, you know, we talked about your assists, um, which I think is your, your top of the, the rankings there at the club, are you? Oh, I, I think I've been overtaken. Is that just part of your game, or is it something you've worked on specifically? Um, it's just something I always, I always set myself uh, a target at the start of each season. Can I make a certain number of assists? And I'm just a bit short of it still. Yeah. Um, just regards to the ball the pitch, it's going to be a, a obviously an actual club pitch. Um, is that a bit concerning when you come into the closing stage of the season? It's still kind of time and going and picking up injuries and that kind of thing. Well, look, well, touch wood. Looking for me, I've never really had problems playing on that surface. Um, so I think we're going to get uh, find our feet on it this week in training. We'll do a bit today on it and let the lads suss it out, see how the ball rolls and all that. But it's just, it's it's just one of them. We just got to get get our heads around it and, and do the best that we can. Just put it to the back of our heads. Marcus, I know you were saying as well that you know you have to find the time to ball it, but you've got two very experienced people there in Dennis and Parks. Yeah, you know, obviously two very experienced keepers. It's obviously great to learn from them. Um, as you say, I just have to buy my time and see what happens, you know. Um, keep learning from them and if my chance does come, um, hopefully I can take it. Yeah, obviously, um, the 21s was my aim at the start of the season, you know, trying to force my way into that squad. Um, but then to get the phone call to say I've been included in the senior squad was great, obviously, for me. Um, yeah, and I'm really enjoying it so far. You've got um, Quibi and Kieran there as well, of course. You know, that job to do with those big minutes, Manchester City. You've got to see that. Yeah, definitely. There's a few great keepers coming up. Um, I've worked at Cuevin before with the 19s, and obviously Gavin getting a big move, and Kieran playing playing in League Two every week. It's great, um, and competition is um, always a good thing, you know, pushing each other on. Um, yeah, and as I said, um, just got to keep uh, keep pushing forward. Now, can never relax because there's always someone knocking on the door behind you. Um, yeah, I was only a baby, um, obviously, when, when he was taken uh, to the World Cup. But, um, yeah, as a, as a fan, obviously, you know the history of, of the FA and what they've done. So, um, yeah, he's obviously done great in the past, and I think he'll do great things uh, in the future as well. How has the reality of being involved in the senior setup compared to your expectations of Henry Morrison? Um, yeah, all the lads have been great, to be honest. They've all welcomed you in easy. I've settled in quickly, to be fair. Um, obviously a few nerves at the start, meeting all the new lads, but you know it's been it's been an easy transition to to settle in. Yeah, and what's tangibly different about uh, 
Um, it's it's pretty similar. Like the lads, the lads won't change. It, it was a great camp last year, um, and it's pretty much the same lads. Similar. It's good. It's actually good. It's a good camp to be to be coming into. Um, because as, as I said, it's a fresh start, so everyone has kind of, the kind of belief that they, they have a chance to play. And um, like for the likes of Mark, he, he like he probably felt uncomfortable the first day. Other than that, he's probably settled in straight away. Like you know the. There's no, uh, there's no egos, no characters. It's just people welcome you and then you're settled in straight away. Yeah, mixing just from seeing like the training video yesterday, mixing from like gliding amongst it, is that a difference from the previous squad? The previous um, I thought it's kind of too early to tell. Like you, it was a uh, yesterday's session was just a case of a few of the lads that hadn't played the weekend. They're gonna work a bit harder. So um, he was just telling us he, he, he was telling us how he wants us to go about. Uh, the, the, the next two games coming up, just uh, how we were going to be playing against them, and uh, he just want, wanted us to kind of be at it. Mm. And are you conscious ahead of the, the Dublin Story game of there being negativity from last year that you have to shake off, if not among the squad, then around you? In negativity in terms of what the media? Yeah, or yeah. Um, or kind of disaffection among fans? No, I don't think so. I think there's, there'll probably be a, an excitement there, a feel good factor there. and. It comes down to us to perform. Uh, you talked about Jack Bowen and you know, the young player and all the depth of good for England. <coughs> Sometimes pull and go, and you know, you maybe hope you might have to concede checks and, and go again. Uh, you know, benefit do you think it'd be for him to go back to Rome, to train very well now, go to the Ireland squad, and it's probably going to make it a good move for him? Yeah, definitely. I think in terms of Jack, he just, as you said, he just needed to go and play football. Um, he was unfortunate at Oldham with how it ended uh, in the relegation because I think he was having a pretty good season then and he, as you said he's just got to build himself back up play a lot of games and he, everyone knows the quality that he has um, and he has the hunger back the desire and he wants to do well and, and hopefully he can do the business over here he's, he's got the reward of a call up and who knows he might get himself back across what, what's your argument that as a player I mean would you have any worries if he was brought in on Saturday I think so. I think Jack's a personality. Like I think the bigger the occasion, the the better he probably play. You know, um, he thrives on being the best player on the pitch. He's got he's got an arrogance about him, uh, like a swagger about him on the ball and that, and he, he loves it. at all. I think the league is becoming a lot more professional now. I think with the setups of Rovers, they're, they're becoming that more academy feel and then from the academy then straight into the first team and th it looks like there's a great opportunity there. You look at Dundalk the last few years, you've got Cork um, looking really, really strong. It's, it's probably the best the league has looked for a long time and I think it'll only continue to get better. Okay,